The, the, the viewfinder also has some keys attached to it. There's a zoom function for assisting in focus. There's an EDE function that lets you play back the images in the viewfinder. And then there's a rotary encoder for selecting menu functions uh, that you'd select on the other side of the camera that lets you select and change some of those parameters and also to adjust the, the color and contrast of the viewfinder. And the viewfinder is powered with a proprietary connector that can be ex extended up to, I think, somewhere around 30 feet. So you can put the camera on a jib arm or, or a remote location. The, uh, the camera as it stands now is pretty close to what we're going to see as a finished product. The, the buttons are in about the same area. The, the form factor is the same, but some of the cosmetics will change. We're changing the viewfinder mount to make it a little uh, more ergonomic. But the idea with the viewfinder is you can move it forward and backwards. You can tilt it. You can move it farther and closer from the, from the camera. Oh, let me talk a little bit about the buttons that are on the operator side here. In the finished camera, these three buttons will be assignable buttons. So you'll be able to go on the other side and you'll be able to select what you want to set these functions for. So let's say you want to select ramp and frame rate and, and ISO. Just by pushing the button, you'll be able to select those. These buttons also are able to be locked out by selecting the lock on the other side. And the on this side, the re record button is also recessed. And there's a play button and a grab button. The play button lets you play back the last scene that you just shot that's recorded on the S by S cards. And the grab button lets you select with an SD card that fits in the bottom of the camera to grab a Airy Raw still or a TIFF or a JPEG. Um, the only other thing that I want to mention at this point is that the camera has a very flat top so that you can mount it in a low mode Steadicam mode or you can mount a data recorder like the S2 or the codex on top and we'll have an accessory handle that brings the handle above the recorder so that you'll be able to carry the camera around if you have the data recorder on it. That pretty much handles it. The only thing that I don't have to show you today is put the camera on my shoulder and shoot some stuff, but that stuff's available on our website. So can I ask you a few technical questions, Absolutely. Michael? Absolutely. So uh, obviously one of the big discussions right now on the forums is Alexa versus the MX chip on the red side. Uh -huh. I mean, that seems to be now the two biggest competitors in that realm of digital cinema, it seems. Sure. So right now, your chip records 2048 by 1080, right? Is that DCP 2K? Well, it captures 2880, but what we record is 2048. By 1080. Yeah. So right now, obviously with digital cinemas, uh, Sony's the initiative of 4K cinema mm -hmm. projection, is it set up to be modularly designed so that maybe 4K acquisition will be a well, possibility? not in this model. We designed this model consciously as a 2K 1920 camera. Uh, the calculation is, is that about 98% of the work that's being done today is being done in 2K and 1920. And we wanted to make the camera small and affordable. And part of the uh, philosophy at ARI is that the raw images that come off the sensor need to be uncompressed data. Mm -hmm. And if you had a, fork, uh, a sensor capable of generating 4K of raw uncompressed data, the camera would be much larger, there'd be much more heat issues, and we'd have to have recording, big recording technology. Um, and currently, people that want to shoot 4K can shoot with motion picture film. We have a great scanner that <laughs> allows you to scan film, and you can scan film at up to 6K and get really great 4K images. Um, it'll be interesting to see when we, when we start showing the 2K images that the camera makes, uh, how crisp and clean they look. There's a, a lot of misperception about the number of pixels that you have in the sensor determines the sharpness and crispness of the image. Sure, you have more pixels, but our calculation is, is that a 2K camera um, that can do 1920 is going to fit very, very easily into people's workflow. Okay, and but in terms of the uh, size of the image, are we looking at a full frame 35 aperture? Meaning, can you shoot anamorphic lenses top to bottom? We have, <clears throat> we've announced another model of the camera called the OV. Okay. The sensor is the same. What we're doing in this sensor is we're hard masking the top and the bottom to give us a 16 by nine frame. Okay. And that allows us to bring the data rate down so that it's manageable to record it. But in the OV camera, which is the third model of the camera that we've announced, <clears throat> we'll have the full 4.3 sensor like we have in the D21, and you'll be able to use it with, with uh, standard anamorphic lenses. We're also looking at the possibility, depending on what the market's looking for, of having an EV model with a 4.3 sensor, if that's what our customers would like. Okay, so right now it, you can record to ProRes 4.4.4 once the module is on, and at the same time stream the, uh, the RAW to, let's say, an, uh, an OB1 recorder or Absolutely, and in addition to that, an HDSDI stream that you could record to 
any type of recorder that accepts HDSDI or send that image to a monitor. Okay, and the sensor data right now that's coming, is it a linear? It, meaning, do you have to go to log C, or are you getting all the information? If let's say you go from 12-bit to 12-bit ProRes 444, are you losing anything other than the ProRes encode? Well, we're not recording raw data on the ProRes cards. The reason for the S by S cards is to work as a proxy, or some people will use it for for finishing because ProRes 422 for television applications is quite good, and 444 you can do some manipulation, color correction, and, and keying. But for those type of applications where you need high-end data, that's what the purpose for Airy Raw is. So we're taking the raw data off the sensor and sending that out for Airy Raw. What we're doing is doing a, a debayer in the camera and recording. We can record with a log C signal on the ProRes cards and on the HD out, but it's it's not an uh, uh, uncompressed data signal. It's been debayered already. Okay. So the, is there a benefit to going to to log C, which is presumably 10-bit versus staying 12-bit in ProRes 444? Well, the advantage of, of uh, capturing log C is that you get extended dynamic range. So you can capture more information in the highlights and you can get more information in the shadows. The interesting thing is in some of the test material that we shot, we intercut the 422 ProRes material with the uncompressed HD material that we captured, and to the eye, you couldn't see it. Obviously, in a visual effects environment or a compositing environment, you'd want to have a cleaner image. But the camera makes a, a really beautiful image directly to the ProRes cards, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, one of the things I was wondering is, we're talking about the viewfinder. Right now, we're looking at an electronic viewfinder. Obviously, yeah. what made the Airy D21 so famous was their great optical viewfinder, the mechanical mirror. Are we going to see any of that kind of implementation well, here? Well, don't tell anyone, but the <laughs> Airy D21 is still a viable camera, and people oh, no. can still shoot with it with an <laughs> optical viewfinder. Uh, Alexa offers a lot of uh, image quality upgrades, but we're really looking at the market. Um, our customers expect a reflex viewfinder system, and, and we're looking at making the OV camera with the 4.3 sensor. We'll also have a reflex viewfinder, basically the same body, but with a little extra room for us to put the reflex viewfinder and and the hardware for the optical viewfinder, you'll still be able to use an electronic viewfinder somewhere off the camera or on the other side. So it, again, it really depends on what the, our customers are asking for, but today, if you want to shoot, as soon as we start um, delivering the Alexa, if you want to shoot with an optical viewfinder, you'll be able to shoot with the D20, uh, D21 camera, and, and we announced at NAB some upgrades to the D21 software, so we're still supporting our customers with the D21. Now, might there be an option on the D21 to actually record in ProRes? to kind of mix well, the gap in, between the two cameras. Internal to the camera, I don't think so, but there are some devices that are going to be on the market that you can use outboard to record to ProRes. I wouldn't say anything couldn't happen. It really just depends on where the market goes. The D21 platform was designed for a specific purpose. Alexa is the next generation of camera, but there's still a lot of uh, projects that are being shot with the uh, D21. Um, uh, Sid Seidel is shooting Lie to Me. They've been shooting with the OB-1 and the D21, and that showed just looks amazing. And Russell Carpenter's The Killers is coming out very soon, and I was just in the grading suite the other day looking at some of that stuff, and it just looks fantastic. Great, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Michael. Congratulations, a great My camera. My pleasure, thank you so much. Thank you.